Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, has sparked a significant debate with his recent definition of working people. This topic has become a focal point in political discussions and has drawn attention from various sectors of society. He made these comments while discussing potential tax changes, which are a crucial part of his party's economic strategy. The implications of these changes could be far-reaching, affecting millions of citizens. Starmer suggested that working people are those who earn their living through regular paychecks. This traditional view aligns with the common understanding of the workforce, encompassing a wide range of professions and industries. However, this definition excludes those who rely heavily on income from assets like shares or property. This distinction is crucial as it separates active earners from passive income recipients, which has significant tax implications. This definition is important because it impacts labor's tax strategy. By clearly defining who qualifies as a working person, the party can tailor its policies more effectively. The Labour Party has promised not to raise taxes for working people, a pledge that has been central to their campaign. This promise aims to protect the financial interests of the average worker. However, they haven't clearly defined who this includes, leading to confusion and debate. The lack of clarity has left many wondering if they fall under this protected category. This ambiguity has created uncertainty about who will be affected by future tax changes. People are concerned about how these policies will impact their financial situation. The debate continues as financial analysts and citizens alike try to understand the full implications of Starmer's definition. The outcome of this discussion will likely shape the future of labor's economic policies and their appeal to the electorate. Labor's promise not to raise taxes on working people was a key part of their election campaign. They argued that this would protect ordinary families from unnecessary financial burden. However, the lack of a clear definition of working people has led to criticism. Opponents argue that labor is being deliberately vague. They claim labor is trying to avoid difficult decisions about who to tax. This ambiguity could also create loopholes. Wealthy individuals might find ways to classify their income as coming from work to avoid higher taxes. The debate over working people has significant political implications. It goes beyond simple tax policy. It touches on labor's core values. Labor has traditionally presented itself as the party of the working class. How they define working people today will shape their image. If labor is seen as out of touch with the average worker, it could hurt them in the next election. Voters may question whether labor truly understands their concerns. This is especially important given the cost of living crisis affecting many in the UK. Starmer's attempt to define working people has ignited debate about what this term means in modern Britain. Some argue his definition is too narrow. It excludes many who work hard but also have investments. Others support Starmer's distinction. They believe those who rely on asset income are not facing the same financial pressures. They argue these individuals are better positioned to contribute more in taxes. This debate highlights the complexities of wealth and income in the 21st century. Section 5. Financial Times Coverage The Financial Times, often referred to as the FT, is one of the most respected business newspapers in the world. Known for its in-depth analysis and comprehensive coverage of financial markets, the FT has been a staple for business professionals and investors alike for decades. The Financial Times, a leading business newspaper, has closely followed this debate. Their team of seasoned journalists and analysts have been meticulously dissecting every aspect of the discussion, providing readers with a thorough understanding of the implications. They reported on Starmer's comments and their potential impact on investors. The FT's coverage included detailed articles and opinion pieces that explored how Starmer's statements could influence market sentiment and investor confidence. The FT noted that many of its readers, who are likely to have significant investments, would fall outside Starmer's definition of working people. This observation sparked a broader conversation about the inclusivity and fairness of such definitions in political discourse. The FT's coverage reflects the concerns of the business community about Labour's tax plans. Their articles highlighted the potential risks and uncertainties that these policies could introduce to the market, emphasizing the need for clear and predictable economic strategies. They worry that Labour's policies will discourage investment and harm economic growth. 
The FT's analysis often includes perspectives from leading economists and industry experts who caution against policies that could stifle innovation and reduce competitiveness. The FT's analysis provides valuable insight into the potential consequences of Starmer's definition. Their in-depth reports and expert commentaries offer a nuanced view of the economic landscape, helping readers navigate the complexities of modern financial markets. The Financial Times remains a crucial source of information for those looking to stay informed about the latest developments in the world of business and finance. Section 6. Bloomberg's Perspective Bloomberg, another influential business news outlet, also covered Starmer's comments. They highlighted the potential for labor to increase taxes on investors if they win the next election. Bloomberg emphasized the uncertainty surrounding labor's tax plans. This uncertainty, they argued, could make businesses hesitant to invest in the UK. Bloomberg's reporting underscored the global economic ramifications of Labour's policies. It showed that this debate has captured the attention of international investors and financial markets. Section 7. Tax Implications The debate over working people has significant tax implications. Taxes are a crucial part of any government's policy, and they directly affect the lives of citizens. The way taxes are structured can influence economic behavior, social equity, and even the overall health of the economy. If Labour wins the next election, they will face the monumental task of deciding how to fund their ambitious spending promises. This decision will not only impact the economy, but also the daily lives of millions of people. They will need to decide who to tax to fund their spending promises. This decision is not just about numbers, it's about values and priorities. Who should bear the burden of funding public services? Should it be the wealthy, the middle class, or a combination of both? Their definition of working people will determine who is shielded from tax increases. This definition is crucial because it will shape the tax policy and its impact on different segments of the population. For instance, Will they consider only salaried employees as working people, or will they include freelancers and small business owners as well? This could mean higher taxes for those who earn a significant portion of their income from assets. Assets like stocks, bonds, and real estate can generate substantial income, and taxing this income could be a way to increase government revenue without burdening the working class. These individuals may face higher capital gains taxes, dividend taxes, or even a wealth tax. Capital gains taxes are levied on the profit from the sale of assets, while dividend taxes are imposed on income from investments. A wealth tax, on the other hand, is a tax on the total value of an individual's assets. A wealth tax could be particularly controversial, as it directly targets the rich. However, it could also be seen as a way to reduce income inequality and fund essential public services. How labor structures these taxes will be closely watched by investors and economists. The impact of these tax policies will be far-reaching, affecting not just the wealthy, but the entire economy. Investors will be particularly interested in how these changes might affect the stock market and investment opportunities. Economists will analyze the broader implications for economic growth, employment, and social equity. Section 8. Public Reaction The public has reacted to Starmer's comments with a mix of support and criticism. Some people agree that those who rely on asset income can afford to pay more in taxes. They believe this is fairer than squeezing ordinary workers. Others feel that Starmer's definition is divisive. They argue that it pits different groups against each other. They worry that it will create resentment and discourage people from investing. Public opinion on this issue is likely to remain divided. Section 9. Conclusion Budget Day Looms the debate over who qualifies as working people is far from over. It highlights the challenges facing labor as they try to appeal to both traditional working class voters and those with significant assets. As budget day approaches, the pressure is on labor to clarify their tax plans. Their definition of working people will be a key indicator of their priorities. It will also signal to voters how labor intends to manage the economy if they win the